Epsilon Eridani b, officially named Eye Gear in 2015, might not be an exoplanet you've heard about before. This might seem weird considering the name of the series is Iconic Exoplanets, and the other four planets I've talked about so far have all been extremely well known for anyone with even the slightest interest in exoplanets. But Eye Gear, at least in the present day, isn't talked about much. I'm choosing to include it as an iconic exoplanet because for some reason, it seems to have what I can only describe as a modest cult following among more advanced astronomy enthusiasts. It's featured in a good number of science fiction works as well, and I've seen a lot of other people say it's their favorite exoplanet. While it may not be known by the general public as much as the other planets I've covered in this series, Aegir is iconic in its own way, and I thought it was fitting. It's also very different from the other iconic exoplanets so far. It's the only gas giant in the series to not be a hot Jupiter, for example. So what is Aegir actually like, and why do people talk about it so much? Welcome to the fifth and final episode of my Iconic Exoplanet series, where I revisit some of the most well-known exoplanets to see what information we actually know about them and what makes them so unique, to hopefully give you a better understanding of the planets you've already heard about. This video will be about Aegir, or Epsilon Eridani b. This is part of a daily upload week on my channel, and there are a total of five Iconic Exoplanets this week. When you're done watching this one, make sure to check out the other four Iconic Exoplanets episodes about Dimidium, Kepler-186f, Janssen, and HD18973b. Aegir is the closest exoplanet to the solar system of this series, being just 10.5 light years away. For comparison, Janssen is 41, Dimidium is 50, HD 189733b is 64, and Kepler 186f is 580. This also makes Aegir the closest exoplanet with an official name to the solar system. While we know of several planets that are closer, none of them have been named yet. Aegir is named after the Norse god of the sea, and shares its name with the moon of Saturn. This actually seems to violate the naming rules of space objects, which for now at least say that no two objects can have the same name. The confusion is voided by the moon of Saturn being spelled with the A and E as separate letters, while the exoplanet gets them merged into one, which is the way I spell it in the title. Alternatively, if you can't type that symbol, many sources just capitalize both the A and E. Anyways, Aegir orbits the star Epsilon Eridani, also called Ron, which is a star you can see without a telescope in the night sky. It's a K-type star, about 82% the mass of the Sun, and 74% its radius. It's also fairly young as far as stars go, between 400 and 800 million years old. The star is surrounded by a few asteroid belts, including one pretty similar to the Sun's Kuiper Belt, and an asteroid belt somewhere around 3 AU away from the star, which will become important later. There's also a gap from about 20 AU to about 70 AU clear of dust that could indicate the presence of additional planets, but so far, none have been confirmed, and as of the time I'm making this video, Aegir is the only confirmed planet in its system. But onto Aegir itself. The main thing that sets this planet apart is that it's extremely similar to Jupiter. Not just in mass, but in orbit and temperature as well. It's about 98% the mass of Jupiter, and has a very circular orbit with an eccentricity of around 0.07, just like Jupiter. It's closer to its star at about 3.5 AU, while Jupiter is 5 AU away from the Sun, but the smaller size of Ron makes this difference less significant. It takes about 7.3 years to make a full orbit of Ron, which is similar to Jupiter's orbital period of about 11.9 years. While the planet's exact temperature hasn't been measured yet, it's likely very cold, just like Jupiter. All in all, Aegir is the closest known Jupiter analog to the solar system, and a very good one. So while we don't know much about the environment of this planet, we can assume it's pretty similar to Jupiter. So far, no moons have been found around the planet, but if Jupiter is anything to go by, it could have a pretty interesting moon system. However, this planet's discovery was pretty complicated. At first, there was actually some pretty good evidence this planet didn't exist. When it was first discovered in the year 2000, it was thought that its orbital eccentricity was as high as 0.6, which would make its orbit much more of an oval shape than the circle we know it is today. In 2006, its orbit was refined, with a more normal but still high eccentricity of 0.25, and an estimated minimum mass 5% larger than Jupiter. Then a few months later, data from Hubble suggested that the planet was 55% larger than Jupiter, with an extremely high eccentricity of 0.7. However, that orbit became problematic when, in 2009, the Spitzer Space Telescope found the asteroid belt 3 AU away from the star that I mentioned earlier. This highly eccentric orbit would take Aegir all the way through the belt, which if true would quickly cause the belt to be destroyed. So it was impossible that both the asteroid belt and the planet existed at the same time, leading to the planet's existence being challenged. This became worse in 2012 and 2013, when another paper suggested that the radial velocity data used to find the planet could actually just be stellar activity mistaken for a planet signal. 
so in short, things weren't looking good for Aegir being a real planet. Luckily in 2019, another paper successfully detected the planet, confirming it wasn't stellar activity, and also found a significantly lower eccentricity of 0.07, which got rid of the stability issue with the asteroid belt. However, Aegir still wasn't in the clear yet, as several other papers from 2019 all found the planet, but all claim wildly different orbits for it, ranging from mostly circular to still significantly eccentric, as well as masses ranging from around 0.6 to around 0.8 Jupiter masses, and different orbital inclinations between 45 and 78 degrees. Multiple attempts to directly image the planet also ended in failure, which set limits on how bright it was. James Webb was used in 2024 and 2025 to directly image the planet, however, it failed both times. This doesn't necessarily mean that Aegir doesn't exist, because at this point we know it does. It simply means that the planet wasn't bright enough or far enough from its star to be seen by James Webb. Anyways, a 2025 study finally gave updated parameters for the planet, at about 98% Jupiter's mass, with a circular orbit and a semi-major axis of 3.5 AU, which are the numbers I've been using in this video. So while this planet's discovery and subsequent characterization was pretty chaotic, we seem to have finally figured out most of the general characteristics of Aegir. Its orbital inclination is also about 41 degrees, which is almost identical to the inclination of the main belt of the system, the Kuiper Belt analog I mentioned earlier. The most interesting part about all this, in my opinion, is we've actually been studying the system for so long that we need to account for its motion throughout the galaxy to accurately determine those new characteristics. Since radio velocity observations began 40 years ago, Epsilon Eridani is actually 19.5 light hours further away from us than it was when observations began. This slow movement was significant enough to alter our observations of the system, partially causing the different numbers I've been mentioning throughout this video. The accurate mass of about 0.98 Jupiters was only found when taking into account the fact that Epsilon Eridani is almost one light day further away from us than it was 40 years ago. But no matter what, it seems like Aegir is pretty close to the inner asteroid belt of the Epsilon Eridani system, which could lead to some interesting effects. It likely has significant effects on the belt, and as I mentioned earlier, there's a large gap mostly devoid of dust beyond Aegir, which could host several additional planets in it. While there isn't that much literature about additional planets, from what I can tell, there might be a Canada gas giant about 50 AU away from the star called Epsilon Eridani C, which is much further away than Neptune's orbit around the Sun. Unrelated to the gaps, there may also be a roughly 7 Earth-mass planet candidate on a short 5-day orbit around the star, but it's not a very strong candidate, as its orbital period is suspiciously close to exactly half the star's rotation period, so it could be related to stellar activity. But anyway, Aegir is remarkably similar to Jupiter in every way we can see so far. Finding this out was pretty difficult, but we now know it's extremely similar to Jupiter in both mass and orbit, making it not only a Jupiter analogue, but the closest Jupiter analogue to the solar system found so far. While we don't know much about its environment, this is a very interesting planet and system to study further. I've included Aegir as an iconic exoplanet because it seems to be particularly famous among professional astronomers and more advanced enthusiasts, even though the public may not be as aware of it as the other planets of the series. But I felt it was fitting for a series finale for iconic exoplanets, and hopefully we find out more about it soon. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out the rest of the iconic exoplanet series.